Would you do it when you can't see their reaction? W what do you chaps think? Well, I'd much rather not. Not if I can help it. Makes me a nervous wreck every time I try. It doesn't work, you see. Well, I always say I like to look them in the eye when I'm on the job. I always think it's a bit unnatural. <laughs> <laughs> you know what those four salesmen are talking about, don't you? That's right, using the telephone. But why are they nervous of it? Well, I mean to say, you rely on your personality to win them over, don't you? You can't do that on the telephone. Off one of your greatest assets is being able to judge people's reactions. Quite. You can only do that if you can see them. Exactly. That's what I say. Look them in the eye. Selling needs your whole personality to be successful. That's my point, really. You cannot sell persuasively on the blower. Of course not. Nobody's suggesting that you should try to sell by phone. Nevertheless, the telephone is a valuable tool in the salesman's trade. And in this film, we're going to examine its importance and discuss how to use it effectively. Did you know that on average the cost of a face-to-face -face call by a salesman is at least three to four pounds? A call on this can cost not pounds, but pennies, so it's worth mastering it. As I said to the salesman in the pub, we're not advocating that you use a telephone for selling, but let's take a look at when it should be used. Here's our model salesman demonstrating the first use, getting information about a potential prospect. Good morning, Mr. Jason. Robinson, Western Glazing here. I understand from the trade press that your company has been commissioned for the Rochester Lane development. Could you please tell me the name of the architect responsible for the project? So use the phone for getting information about your prospect and about his company and for isolating the correct contact. For simple information, ask the switchboard operator. If it's more complicated, try personnel or PR or even the managing director's secretary. The next use for the telephone, giving information. You promise some information to a customer. Now, do you drive 30 miles to spend 20 minutes with him when you could do this? I put your problem to our technical department, and they say that by using the blanket form of insulating fiber, you will be able to reduce the overall weight. Another use is to sound out an inquiry to avoid wasting time on an unnecessary journey. With regard to your inquiry, I see you're particularly interested in our hardcore floor covering. Could you please give me some idea of the number of square feet involved? And how about when the ball is in your customer's court and you want to check progress? Mr. Johnson? Barrett here, BK Plastics. Tell me, did you reach a decision on my estimate for the new moulding process? Another use concerns those whose regular visits to customers are mainly devoted to taking orders. Surely some of these could be done just as well by phone. Morning, Tom. Peter Davis, Central Office Supplies. I'm putting in your usual order, but um, I was just looking back over your record, Tom. You haven't had any carbon for nearly six months. Can I add a dozen standard weight plaques to your order? Five examples of how salesmen can save time and money and impress people with their efficiency by using the telephone. One, getting information about prospects. Two, giving information you have promised. Three, sounding out inquiries. Four, checking the progress of your proposition. Five, taking fill-in orders instead of calling every time. But a word of warning about that last one. Don't overdo it or you may regret the effect on your customer. Yes, that's right. A dozen standard weight blacks. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Tom. Goodbye. Goodbye. He never comes to see me anymore. <laughs> All right, then. So I won't give him any more orders. The end of a beautiful friendship. The result of using the telephone as a total replacement for the face-to-face -face relationship. Now we come to the most important use of the telephone, getting an interview with a potential customer. We're going to examine it under two headings, preparation, technique. Preparation before using the telephone and the technique of actually using it. Firstly, preparation. Each day, time should be set aside for the making of phone calls. 
Equally important, of course, is the place, and all the necessary information should be at hand. Let's see. Better phone that chap Miller first. Yes, now, who's his number? Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> oh, no. Let's change. I say, old boy, you don't happen to have a... You see what I mean? Time and place are equally important. So don't make your calls from a public phone box. Make them from home or from the office, like the salesman over there, who is quite relaxed and free from interruptions and perfectly prepared to begin his telephone operation. He sells insurance, which means a lot of cold canvassing by telephone. A difficult combination, I can tell you. So much so that my company has developed a system for using the telephone. Perhaps you'd like to show us what your preparation consists of. Sure. First, I make a complete list of all the calls I'm going to make. And these notes beside the names? Ah, those indicate the type of approach I'm going to use in each case. That means you've thought about each call in advance. Of course. Then I have a diary in which I enter any appointments I make. And finally, this form. On here, I have word for word exactly what I'm going to say for the type of approach I choose. And what's more, all the answers to any major objections I might come up against. So I'm never at a loss for a word. So now he's quite ready to pick up the phone and start dialing. Which brings us to the second of our two headings, the technique of actually using the telephone. First of all, let's see how our friend from the phone box actually copes with a call when he's not worrying about having enough small change. Good morning. Can I speak to Mr. Miller, please? One moment, please. Mr. Miller's office. Ah, good morning. That's Miss Pearson, isn't it? Yes, that's right. This is David Garrick, lifelong assurance here. You may remember I called in the other week, but Mr. Miller was away on business. Uh, do you think I could have a word with him now? Well, he's on the other line at the moment, Mr. Garrick. Would you like to hold on? Certainly. By the way, how did you enjoy that holiday I heard you planning? Oh, it was super, thank you. Bags of sunshine. Oh, hold on. He's just clearing. I'll see if he can talk to you now. Fine. So far, so good. Let's see what happens next. I'm putting you through now, Mr. Garrick. Hello, Mr. Miller. <laughs> Jolly nice to talk to you again, old man. <laughs> Look, a little bird told me you might be interested in taking out some life cover. Now, why don't we meet for a noggin and I'll show you something interesting, as the actress said to the... You what? No, 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 of course I'm not trying to con you, old boy. Is this chap in your office said... Well, I mean, I, th I thought he said... Yes, 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 Mr. Miller. I do apologize for any misunderstanding. I just thought you might be interested in one of our policies. And of course, you can have the utmost confidence that all our policies are true. Of course, I wasn't trying to be rude. You no, know, I can see that now. You know, honestly. Please. It's always happening to me. And I try so hard. The point is, of course, he was trying too hard putting on an act because he was so uncomfortable using the phone. To give him confidence, what he needs is a system. Let's see how our friend here goes about it. Good morning, Mr. Myers. This is Don Ryder of the World Life Assurance Company. Oh, yes. Now, my company has recently introduced an exciting new investment plan, which I think you'll find extremely interesting. Yes. As it'll only take a few minutes to show you, would a morning or an afternoon appointment be more convenient? Morning's my best time. Or would you be free for a short time on Thursday at 9.30, or would Friday at 11 o'clock be better? Friday's fine. Thank you, Mr. Myers. I look forward to seeing you on Friday at 11 o'clock. Right, Mr. Ryder. Goodbye. Goodbye. That looked ridiculously easy, didn't it? But that's exactly how a well-known company does it, with 50% of contacts leading to an interview, which is remarkable for insurance cold canvassing. 
So, the system works. And as the principles involved in that simple call apply to all calls, let's analyze it step by step. Step one, greeting and identification. Good morning, Mr. Myers. This is Don Ryder of the World Life Assurance Company. Name and company, as simple as that. Now step two, gain the man's interest. My company has recently introduced an exciting new investment plan, which I think you'll find extremely interesting. Step three, instantly into the close using an alternative. As it'll only take a few minutes to show you, would a morning or an afternoon appointment be more convenient? Step four, make the appointment. Would you be free for a short time on Thursday at 9.30 or, or would uh, Friday at 11 o'clock be better? Step five, confirm date and time. Thank you, Mr. Myers. I look forward to seeing you on Friday at 11 o'clock. Those five steps are simple and effective. The thing that can complicate them is an objection. And as you may know, he gets them all too often, like this. As it will only take a few minutes to show you, uh, would a morning or an afternoon appointment be more convenient? Morning, I suppose, but I'm sorry I'm really not interested. Uh, yes, Mr. Myers. Uh, I can understand you're not being interested in something you've not had a chance to see. But so you can judge this idea for yourself, would you be free for a short time on Thursday at 9.30? Or would Friday at 11 o'clock be better? Yes, OK, Friday then. Thank you, Mr. Myers. I look forward to seeing you on Friday at 11 o'clock. He dealt with that objection, not by attempting to overcome it, but by acknowledging it briefly and then trying to close again. It's no good getting bogged down trying to deal with objections. I simply acknowledge them and go straight in for another close. It's the only way. That technique may be rugged, but it's one that works. One that brings business to the company and benefit to their customers in terms of the right insurance cover. Now, you may be thinking, OK, that technique's fine for him, but it's far too simple to be applied to me. But in fact, it can be applied. Let's uh, talk to someone working on a different front. Now, this chap sells industrial fans. But I make the same sort of preparation as the bloke in insurance does. List of calls to be made, with facts about every prospect and a decision on the approach to use. Diary for appointments and my cue sheet showing me exactly what I'm going to say with answers for all the major objections. Like the insurance salesman, he's completely prepared. Now he's making a call to a factory manager. He won't try and sell his equipment on the phone. He's quite clear about that. The purpose of his call is to get an interview at which he will sell. And being properly prepared, he's relaxed and confident. And once again, you'll see the five-step technique in action. May I speak to Mr. Rowland, please? Step one coming up. Greeting and identification. Oh, good morning, Mr. Rowland. This is John Raycliffe of the Spark Electrical Company, Stonehurst. Now step two, gaining the client's interest. I'd like to show you a product which could help reduce maintenance and redecoration costs at your works. Now straight into step three, the close. Uh, would you prefer to see me in the morning or would the afternoon be more convenient? Well, I'm usually available in the mornings. Step four, making the appointment. Are you free on Thursday at 10 o'clock or shall we say Friday, 9.30? Uh, Friday suits me better. Fine. Step five, confirm date and time. Thank you, Mr. Rowland. I look forward to seeing you at 9.30 this Friday, the 11th. As simple as that. Only one thing can complicate it, an objection. Deal with that exactly as the insurance salesman did. Acknowledge it and go in for a close. Certainly, I'll send you details, Mr. Rowland. But they'd be more valuable if I could explain how they might help on your particular premises. Would you be free at 10 o'clock on Thursday morning, or perhaps 9.30 on Friday would suit you better? At all costs, avoid the great trap, allowing an objection to involve you in actually trying to sell on the telephone. Yes. Yes, I can see that your present spring trap has seemed satisfactory, but ours has got this new piece, you see, sticking out the left... Sorry, it's sticking out the left-hand side. Yeah, and it's got this, this round bit right at the end there. Pardon? Sorry? <laughs> Uh, no, 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 that's still there, yes. Yes, no, the bit I'm talking about is the reeded bit up the left-hand side. Are you still, oh, there you are. Is it up the left-hand side, and, and then it goes at right angles. Yes, well, it's just as it gets underneath that... Sorry? So, yes, yes I, I, do, I do see you're very busy, sir, but if I could just explain, you see. Well, it's just underneath that. The, hello? 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 I've been cut off. Hello? Operator? Operator, I've been cut off. So don't ever fall into that trap. Now, let's recap the five steps. One, greeting and identification. Two, gain the prospect's interest. Three, the close. Four, make the appointment. Five, confirm date and time. Now, of our five steps, the key one is step two, gaining the man's interest. To do that, you must offer him a benefit. I'd like to show you a product which could help reduce maintenance and redecoration costs at your works. 
Alternatively, you can present the same benefit in the form of a question. How would you be interested in a product which could help reduce maintenance and redecoration costs at your works? Or you can go further. Ensure his interest by asking a question that makes him think about a problem and realize that you may have something valuable for him. Mr. Rowland, how much do you spend a year on maintenance and redecoration? Whatever the answer, he has that man's interest because it raises something important to him. All those examples of step two were applicable to almost every prospect that salesman might call. Best of all is to offer a benefit which is particular and personal to the man you're calling. Something you found out during your research about him as a man or about his company. Our friend is calling another works manager. He found out that they recently had labor trouble in their factory. Mr. Wilby, please. Hello. Good morning, Mr. Wilby. This is John Redcliffe, Spark Electric. Oh, yes. What is it? I'm extremely busy. Mr. Wilby, could you estimate offhand what that recent heat wave cost you in loss of production? Well, it was, in fact, a very large sum, a considerable amount. Well, would you be interested in a product which not only helps you avoid such losses, but also increases productivity under normal conditions? Hmm, I might be. Tell me more. Well, I'd need to show you some facts and figures, Mr. Wilby. Could I call at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, or would the afternoon be more convenient for you? Well, let me see. Yes, I'm free in the afternoon. Uh, say 3 o'clock. Fine. I look forward to seeing you then at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Good. Using step two that way, gaining the man's interest by something directly relevant to his particular problem, that means using the system at its maximum effectiveness. Now, finally, to sum up. Excuse me. Yes? No, sorry, I'm not interested. No, A, I'm too busy, B, I've got one already, C, I hate the things anyway, and D, I wouldn't buy anything from your firm if it were the last one on earth. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm not usually so bloody-minded as that. But the only thing to do when you come across a prospect who reacts as I've just done is to cut your losses and bow out gracefully. So you see, we're not guaranteeing success every time. But you can make the telephone one of your major assets if you follow the principles we've been looking at. Make sure you use it for the right reasons. Getting information, checking inquiries, and so on. Above all, use it for getting an interview with a new prospect. For that use, follow the system we've demonstrated. Thorough preparation beforehand, the five-step technique when actually using the phone. Just one hour a day set aside to using this effectively and you'll be amazed how well you can do. Try it. <laughs>